Hey everyone, now that there exists some peptide drama in the world, let's talk about whether BPC-157, a body protective compound many of us adore, should be a banned substance. Let's start with Joe Rogan's thoughts on the matter. Here's a clip of Joe speaking with ultra-athlete Cameron Haynes about the topic. Because they're, they they're trying to make money off of exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. And these compounding pharmacies can make it, and they make it fairly cheaply. It's not expensive. Mm -hmm. And they, they're doing that with BPC-157 as well, because so many athletes use BPC-157. It's a very common one for helping heal injuries, and it works. works really well. I know a lot of people that use it. A lot of fighters can't use it, unfortunately, uh, but a lot of jiu-jitsu guys use it. It's MMA a... fighters in the UFC, at least, can't So they use test it. for it? Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think they should, because I, I think... What it does is help you heal. And I think if you're in a sport that literally most of the time you're getting smashed, mm -hmm. most of the time you're getting kicked and punched and you're always dealing with injuries, wouldn't we want to help these guys get to the finish line? So those are about the thoughts you'd expect to hear with Joe Rogan. And I can't say I disagree, but before we get into the details a little bit more, let's just do a quick review of what BPC-157 is. Besides, quite obviously, the topic I like to talk about the most, BPC-157 is a gastric pentadecapeptide found in human gastric acid that can be used subcutaneously via injection or orally, and it's clinically researched primarily in inflammatory bowel disease, things like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. So what the research has shown, albeit primarily in rodent studies, is that it has the ability to heal diabetic wounds, corneal injuries, different types of fistulas quite well, alkaline burn injuries, reverse NSAID-induced damages, musculoskeletal injuries, and the main properties by which it's proposed to do so are through angiogenesis and vasodilation. So things like widening and formation of new blood vessels. It's also shown its ability to kind of prevent blood clot formation, and it's also antioxidant as well as anti-inflammatory. Now you'll see that a lot of people, especially in the fields of health optimization and fitness, are talking about BPC-157, and that's because anecdotally it has been used quite successfully by many, including Joe Rogan himself, who I believed healed a complex shoulder injury with it, or with great assistance of it. Okay, so this says here that the experimental peptide BPC-157 is prohibited under the WADA World Anti-Doping Agency prohibited list in the category of S0 unapproved substances. Furthermore, this substance is not approved for human clinical use by any global regulatory authority and it may lead to negative health effects. And with regards to risks, this says, because BPC-157 has not been extensively studied in humans, no one knows if there is a safe dose or if there is any way to use this compound safely to treat specific medical conditions. What I find quite funny is that BPC-157 seems to be the only compound within this list, and it's any pharmacologic substance which is not addressed by any of the subsequent sections of the list, and with no current approval by any governmental regulatory health authority for human therapeutic use. So drugs under preclinical or clinical development or discontinued designer drugs or substances approved only for veterinary use is prohibited at all times. So this class covers many different substances including, but not limited to, BPC-157. However, it seems to be limited to BPC-157. So I think the most important thing with regards to regulation of drugs and compounds, especially things that are more experimental in nature, is safety. However, I think BPC on the banned substance list highlights less about, you know, the anti-doping agency and its regulations and exposes more about peptides in general. Although I think at this point it's okay for BPC-157 to be on the banned substance list due to lack of human research, I know there's already some clinical trials out there that shown good safety and tolerability. I think the bigger problem here is that popular use and, you know, possibly one day being taken off of this list is limited by financial incentive. There's a lack of human evidence which prolongs its position here on this list, and it's a vicious cycle because there's little research, and there's, as a result, there's less money, which leads to less research, which leads to less money, which goes on forever. And I do think that 
WADA putting this on the list, which, you know, we typically think of performance enhancers, things like testosterone, HGH, it kind of paints a negative picture of BPC-157 and peptides in general, thus even prolonging the access to research as it's, you know, more of a derogatory thing for a compound which could help a ton of people in the future be put on this list. Not to mention, I don't really feel that BPC-157 in and of itself as a gastric peptide is really a performance enhancer. If anything, I do agree with Joe in the sense that it could heal things that people need healed, especially people who are investing their whole life into getting the crap kicked out of them. Um, so, you know, the research at this point shows that although there's limited human data, there is good safety and good tolerability profiles and data highlighting resolution and improvement of many different types of debilitating injuries and things that many people go through on a regular basis. At the same time, it's not androgenic. It's not a growth hormone releasing peptide. That said, I do have the same fears with regards to maybe long-term use of BPC-157 or especially if we don't know where it's coming from, where it was sourced, all these sorts of things because compounds that create new blood vessels that encourage growth, you know, these are two characteristics of cancer. And so if we have something that we don't want growing or we're predisposed to something that may grow, it might not be the best idea. However, this whole process of banning peptides and, you know, publicly shaming them essentially is really prolonging long-term investigation into the side effects and benefits as well as the risks. In general, I'm sharing my disappointment with federal agencies quelling the promise of BPC-157 due to financial incentive and just easily swatting it away instead of promoting its future research. But all in all, what are your thoughts? Type in the comments, shoot me a message, however you want to portray this. I'm curious to hear how you feel on the topic. What have your experiences been? Um, and as always, thanks for watching the video. Please give me a like and a subscribe as you can as it's the only way to support the channel. Have a happy holidays, good new year, and we'll talk soon.